Jita was very, a very spiritual friend of ours and uh, a very strong friend of ours um, musically and he always took us on a musical journey whenever you were with him and um, it was just paying our respects back to him, myself and Guy Battery, uh, we, just, we wanted to carry on with the Jita legacy. I mean, we, he never got to appreciate and hear the release of the Sweet Thorn album we did as a collaboration. We were going to release the album in Mozambique anyway, the month, well, he died on the 4th of April. At the end of that April, we were going to um, release the album in Mozambique. But anyway, we just we wanted to continue that legacy. And um, Jita being a, like a national icon in Mozambique, we wanted to carry on his legacy through his music by doing some shows, promoting the album we recorded together in Maputo for friends and Jita's fans and uh, people who really loved him dearly. Firstly, not having gone to Mozambique, well I've been to Mozambique before we had done shows there, but I'd only been to the south, like sort of a tourist destination. I went to Maputo, the city, which was I was very keen to see. And obviously being a big fan of, of Jitos over the years, I got into Tananas and Jita Boloi at the age of 15. And um, yeah, obviously helping out his family and his, his friends and his wife and his kids, you know, obviously I was very keen to, and willing to help out and obviously being a big fan, I was very attracted to the idea. So. And obviously going on the road with Nibs is always good fun, playing good music, so I don't think I thought twice, I think, yeah, we hit it and we went. When you listen to Tananas these days, definitely like a spread to Mozambique in the music, like yeah. a song especially. Yeah, like a nice rhythm, so. yeah. And the next one especially, I, 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 was gonna get drum and bass. I always hear like, Maputi, the city of Maputi. Now I think we can make um, it's better for us to make the sound check at four o'clock. Okay, that's fine because it's just the two of us. We we work very quickly. We sound check very quickly. We can be done in 15, 20 minutes. Easy, yeah. Thank you. Oh, that tiny song. It's a German. Hold on, let me It's an A if that helps. Okay. In Mozambique, as I said, it was it was always a there was a cause behind our our performance. You know, there was we, we were we were working for Jito, and I think spiritually already there's there was there was an attachment there because of our intentions. You know, and um, working with Nibs, both being spiritual spiritual people, you know, I think that's inevitable that this will come across in the music because the music is just a reflection of who and what you are. 
That's why I've got a passion for Maputo and a passion for Mozambique, and it's because of Jito. I just, uh, he got me excited about this country long before I ever came here because of the war. We weren't, at, we, we couldn't get, at, we couldn't come through at the time. But I'm gonna always come here, and I'm, this is almost like a second home because Jito is like a spirit in the wind, which. I'll always come back here and I'll always have that a strong, strong feeling in my soul and a remembrance and love for Jita for being here. Jita was like an amazing person for, for me, very special. Um, I describe Jita as a beautiful person, a beautiful musician. Um, because Jito, one of the most impressive things I've noticed from him is his involvement with music, his commitment. That was all he wanted and he lived music. Uh, to the point that um, he had so much music, the quantity of music he had, uh, it he was made so prolific. I mean, yes. he used to work right through the night. Yes, I mean, the night. And it wasn't uncommon sometimes for him to write seven tunes in a week or mm, yeah. no yeah. we, we, we uh, I spent two days at his place we're like uh, recording some stuff uh, Teshito's music mm -hmm. and uh, one amazing thing is he was the first getting into the studio and the last going out mm -hmm. but he was always wake up very early in the morning to go back to the music to what he was doing last night mm -hmm. you know and uh, he had so much music that it was almost impossible to like characterize him according to a musical genre. Mm, mm, mm. You know, uh, he could be he could love reggae today, but tomorrow he will be writing something um, completely different. When, 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 when you heard Jitu uh, play on, on stage, uh, he was intense in his music and he was just as intense in his friendships with people. You know, he was a, a very, a very uh, serious guy about, about his music and he was very, very serious about his friendships. He didn't, uh, uh, he didn't take friendships lightly, you know, he, he was a guy who, who, who genuinely liked people and, and that's, what, that's what I remember about Jitu. When I started gigging with Jeet, and unbeknown to a lot of his fans and a lot of people who followed him, the gig we did, he was playing a lot of nylon string acoustic guitar, and he blew me away as a guitarist mm -hmm. too. The way he used to finger style mm -hmm. these, these these intricate rhythms, mm -hmm. which you can't just hear and pick them up. I had to, often he taught me the rhythms, and he we had to slow them down like almost three times so I could hear his little intricacies and how he actually got these rhythms. Yeah. So as well, he's an incredible acoustic player as well. Mm -hmm. When you hear like on the Sweet Thorn albums, all the nylon string stuff is played mm -hmm. by Jeet. Mm -hmm. player, incredible, player. incredible acoustic guitar. But that I think I think uh, that came from from him being so musical. You know, yeah. it, it was it was quite easy for him to to pick up the the acoustic guitar. And whilst not an acoustic guitar player as such, he, the the stuff that he came up mm -hmm. with was was really nice. And uh, we spent. When he came back from Japan, I think we spent three hours locked up in his room and he was just playing around with the guitar and with the bass guitar and then he went to the, the keyboards and a little bit of percussion and he did all, the, all of this stuff just from the pleasure of music. We got our friend Dua. Oh, okay who's uh, stand 6'4", got the most incredible voice to come and sing on one of the tunes with us. Uh, from my new album, Beautiful Feet. Dua comes to Durban to work, actually. Work comes to four, for four days to come and lay his track down and uh, the engineer in the studio was just, Brent was just, couldn't believe his ears. Uh, Dua comes in and unbeknown to Dua, Brent has pushed the record button 
and uh, he just says to do it. Just do a rehearsal trial. take, trial take. Okay, uh, we did the trial take, and afterwards, uh, I think Dua said, "Are we ready? Let's go for it." And uh, Brent said, "Well, actually, we recorded, and <laughs> it sounded great. You know, you don't have to do it again." Okay, so just we'll get it in one take. Okay. What? Two, one, two, three, four. Sombra passando por mim, azul, laranja, lilás. Pequena cigana se foi, cá fiquei cheio de dor. Vida vai sem sabor. Não, não, não. Está no ar que respiro, está no cor da minha canção do dia. Vento me tirou do sério, quero todo o tempo de volta pra diluir desilusão. Nem resto, nem sequer um sinal, esperança se foi. Não faz mal, vou lembrar os seus olhos. Cá fiquei cheio de dor Sombra passando por mim Azul, laranja, lila Pequena cigana se foi Cá fiquei cheio de dor Vida vai sem sabor Não, não, não Está no ar que respiro, está no cor da minha canção do dia. Vento me tirou do sério, quero todo o tempo de volta para diluir desilusão. Nem rastro, nem sequer um sinal, esperança se foi. Não faz mal, vou lembrar os seus olhos. Oh, talking about Gito, uh, is he was uh, some kind of a role model for. He made he made be the people believe that it's possible to to do music, the music you want to do, and he was one of the the first ones who who made it abroad, and therefore it it was easier for the musicians in here believe that it's possible to make music and most of us we look up to him. Yeah, working with Nibs is, is, is a pleasure, you know, he's a great musician, he's a great improviser, he's a great composer and on stage he's, a, he's, he's very adventurous, he likes to like push you, he often puts me in scenarios and he did particularly well <laughs> on this subject in, in Mozambique by just throwing a whole new tune that I'd never heard before, you know, and that was, that was, that was great fun. Um, and to work with, 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 with a warm heart, with a, with a great man is always, you know, it's, 
it makes it makes it a lot easier, you know. It's and uh, always fun. He sorely missed, uh, I mean he was like a, a passport for young uh, up and coming artists from Mozambique um, to make it possible that they can do something beyond their borders and Gita was that symbol for them, for Mozambicans and still is. Gito, although he spent a, a very little time in Mozambique, I think Gito had a, a really uh, deep love for Mozambique mm -hmm. because this this is where where he's from. This is where where he, all the stuff that Gito is, uh, this is where it comes from. Gito was at his happiest in Mozambique. You know, whenever yeah. whenever whenever he came here, the people really loved him. You know, the the the, the people that went to his gigs mm -hmm. came away completely mind blown from from what Gito did, and. Uh, he was like a, almost like a, like a hero to Mozambicans for a guy, for a guy to, you know, to, to leave from Mozambique, young as he was when he left, and then to come back as, as such a master of, of the music that he played. Uh, people really appreciated him. I think Jitu's music, uh, his approach to music, it was, uh, he was one of those who just played what he, he felt and he, he didn't have rules in his music. And I think that makes good music, when you don't have so many rules and say, uh, I'm playing now this kind of music and this is what I play. If you are open to different kinds of music as he was, and I think that's the best way to, to make music. So he was, he was just a bird. He's just amazing, he's just amazing. He, you, can't, you can't describe him, he has, he plays jazz today, but tomorrow he's going to be playing something totally different, but always with his soul. His soul. Always there. His soul. I want, to tell you, I want to tell you an interesting story. About three years ago, four years ago, a Herbie man came out to South Africa to, to play at the, the Grahamstown Jazz Festival. Festival yeah. And before he, a month before he came out, the promoters of the show gave Herbie Mann a whole bunch of different CDs of bassists who they thought might fit with Herbie's music, you know? And Herbie said, I want to work with one guy, that's Gita Beloy. So Gita got the gig, you know? Wow, amazing, amazing. And, uh, it, I mean, he had such an identifiable voice, not just in his playing, but also in his uh, playing, Beautiful you know? falsetto, an amazing falsetto. Was, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 Gito. <laughs> yeah, it's Gito. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. He's amazing. You know, I have nothing else. You know, he's amazing. A beautiful composer, a beautiful percussionist, a beautiful singer, a beautiful guitarist, a beautiful bass player. He's complete. Yeah, he is. He's complete. He's an incredible family man, eh? and uh, I mean, actually his daughter spent hours with him in the studio mm -hmm. when he was composing. He yeah. actually incorporated with them, and the thing was, which is so beautiful, often you go around there, and he's working on a new composition, and he, Laura's got a shaker in her hand, and uh, Tiva's holding another percussion instrument, and he's showing him different rhythms to play, and mm -hmm. just his, his love as a musician just yeah. was transported into his uh, everyday uh, life. Um, you know? I always said to him, like, you're from Mozambique, but you don't. How come you don't uh, spend more time here? Then he said, now I'm a family man and got to get back. But the most interesting story is, and I wrote it in the liner notes of Sweet Thorn, is when he came here to do his last gig, the most mind-boggling thing is that his grandmother, his mother, his brother and sisters came to the, came to the gig. And when I saw him just the day he died, he said, you're so happy because he, on the last day Mapuche said he spent at his mom's place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he got, it was almost like a completion. He came yeah, and spent yeah, the last yeah. day there. Well, I phoned Gito's mother to say that we are interested in doing two benefit concerts for, for the family there. So 
and we told the farm we weren't sure how how many people were going to come to the gigs and how much we we're going to make but we just said we wanted to make it do as an ongoing thing a yearly annual event where the two of us will play in Maputo to raise money for the family. Jito was always a, a breadwinner and he was giving always a substantial amount to his family every month. So it was the least we could do. It was, uh, the gesture was carrying on Jito's legacy through the music and uh, doing these concerts for him, with him in rem remembrance and the proceeds going to his family. Very emotional because um, first, well, the first concert it was six months after Gito died, and it was just before Christmas. And uh, on a leave, leaving Maputo, going back to Durban, and stopping over at uh, Gito's family's house was very emotional. Giving the money, uh, money through it for them, it was just I think symbolic for Gito's mother that there are people out there who do really care, and uh, I think it just kind of it was overwhelming for her to see how Gito was loved by so many people. It was fantastic, we got to, we got to play one of Gito's tunes to his mother and his family and, um, and we, we wrote a song for him that we, that we performed to and it was very emotional. She was, she was overwhelmed by our, our gesture and I think um, it was very rewarding for us to, to, to know that, that she was, it was appreciated our, our work for, for her and his family. Always looking forward to for road trips with them, so it'll be great to to relive that moment and to play some more great music. Yeah. Well, between Guy and myself, we're going to make it an annual event to play in Maputo and do an annual tribute concert for Jita, uh, raising money for his family. I mean, he wants it, he would want that, and uh, he would. Uh, we want to carry on his legacy. And as this cliche saying goes, I mean, he was never appreciated in his time. I mean, good die young and they're only really appreciated long after their time is gone. So we, we, we feel a passion for continuing his legacy and he always loved what we did, did musically and uh, remember the shows we did, Guy came on board opening up shows we did when I played with Gito as a duo and he's passionate about it, continuing the legacy. So that I think it'll always be there for us as long as we play music.
Sacudir 